Hello, this is Ina Funny, owner of a large gold pile. And this is Meridon from Poly Champions. Today, we are going to be watching some awesome replays featuring Mindbenders, and you guessed it, some more Mindbenders. Let's get started. So in our first matchup, we get a perfect example of how Mindbenders can be useful. We see Astria here playing Crimson, who is Purple Imo. Both players are exploring north, and they are potentially seeking to capture a village in the fog in the middle. And a then a curious thing happens from Teal Imo's perspective. This Purple Swordsman disappears into the fog here, and is gone. In an impressive display of lateral thinking, Astria picks up vision on this mountain, which informs the decision to buy this Mindbender. What? A Mindbender? <laughs> useful. Just wait until the next turn. Astria gets Rhodes from the ruin, picks up vision with the warrior on this swordsman which stepped on a village. Now because that mountain is there, Astria can buy climbing, place a road, oh. and move the mindbender on top of the swordsman. The swordsman can't kill it because it has a defense bonus, only because of the mountain being there. And now when we get to the next turn, purple moves some units around, trying to think of anything to do, and has to retreat away, not capturing the village. That's awesome. Way to go, Mindbender. We can see an awesome display of move order here in this game between Sunflower and Luristian. He's about to capture this crucial village in the middle here. Can Teal Imo do something about it? Maybe put their giant on it, virtually guaranteeing a capture? As a matter of fact, they can. We're going to see Sunflower, our teal player, pick up navigation, grab the stars, unseed to their city in the south. They're going to pick up roads. They're going to use roads intelligently. They're going to pick up this with warrior first, then clearing it with the ship. Now the path is cleared for the giant to step on the village. It's perfect, and- Oh. Oh no. I- That might be game over. Oh, oh god, it is, it is. Teal Imo is absolutely lost now. There's nothing he can do. Oh no. <laughs> this game features Anva versus Mixu. It looks absolutely hopeless for Mixu, but in one last attempt, the cloaks come out, sieging his opponent's capital. He pr also prepares his own giant push here. If he's able to pull up a siege and get a giant push on his own capital, just one more turn, capture his opponent's capital, that'll be the whole game. Fortunately for Anva though, grabs these units, places them correctly, blocking these resources, making sure that a giant push can't happen, securing the game for Anva. Here we have a game between two well-known players, Signor Evanso and Anva, who we have seen before today. As Anva makes this move, we can see that Evanso gets into a lot of trouble here with all of these bombers and soon enough a giant sieging his city here. It's very difficult for him to do anything. However, there's a way that he's going to convert this giant with his mind vendor. He steps this archer to the north tile, attacking it and sacrificing his own archer. But this resets the push order for this giant. It gets repelled from the order it was attacked in. The archer attacked it from the north and the giant is now going to get pushed to the south. So we see a giant push come out and boom, converted. That's a giant for Ivanso. This game, very interesting. We have Espark from Poly Champions versus Big Boy, banned from Poly Champions. In this Clash of the Titans, who's going to prevail? Espark has a game changing play setup. A devious trap attacks this giant twice with the two archers, then seemingly forgets to move the other archer out of the way. Big Boy, blinded by avarice, takes it. He doesn't understand what's coming for him. Espark knows though, sets up this giant push into giant conversion, and that's the game. Big Boy designs on the spot. By the way, the exact same thing happens in a matchup between Mystic Creator versus Camera. This game features the one and only Vorce versus Anva. Vorce is facing a tough position and it becomes all that much more tough when this knight appears straight out of nowhere. The rider comes up, gets ready to siege by bouncing in. The knight chains for all these units, trading down material to this easily winning position. The triple siege, with absolutely no hope left in this position, Vorce has to resign. What a knight chain. This is a matchup between the one and only Boris and Harucha. He has a nice and peaceful exploring and expanding day on the square, sees this village in the center here and is planning for the future. Actually, never mind. All right, that was Imo's Tribe Moon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider hitting that subscribe button, liking the video. Tell us in the comments what you thought about any of those games. See you on the next one. Peace.